our next speaker uh, unfortunately can't be here because her, her partner, her husband, was rushed to hospital yesterday. Uh, and that was Kim McLeod, who was also going to be talking to you about happiness. So uh, taking her place is me! <laughs> uh, and, um, but I'm not going to talk to you about happiness, which, which I could, because it's another subject I'm extremely passionate about. In fact, I designed an equation, which is crazy that I designed an equation when I don't even have maths O-level or English O-level. I actually lied when I became a teacher. I, I, I know you shouldn't lie, but I was only going to teach physical education, so I didn't have to teach maths or English. Did anyone here have anyone... Uh, did anyone here go to school? <laughs> All right. Everyone went to school. Um, did you have... How many teachers did you have that inspired you? Who had one? Just put your hand up if you had one. Okay, put your hand down. Put your hand down if you had two. Hopefully no one's a teacher in here, but someone's bound to be. Uh, did anyone have three? Okay, look at that. Okay, did anyone have four? Four teachers. Wow, do you two know each other? Because you sat next to each other. Okay, well, maybe, they, maybe they were the same teachers. Did anyone have five teachers that, that really inspired them? Okay, for me, at university and at school, I had not one teacher. I liked some of my teachers, but they didn't inspire me. To me, the word inspire is to breathe life into something, to breathe life into a subject. So when Vanessa speaks and all the speakers you've already heard speak and the ones that will, they breathe life into this subject. And hopefully you can feel that and maybe you'll be inspired to do the same thing. So hopefully now you know what inspiration means. Now, I could talk about happiness. And as I'll just finish that story, uh, I designed an equation in 2003 for happiness for Thompson Holidays. Uh, an equation to, for people to, four questions to work out how happy you are, you get a percentage score. But we looked a lot of the research on happiness. And it was weird when it came out, it was broadcast in 27 countries around the world. Now that wasn't our intention, but we had people from Korea coming over to meet me because they thought that I had found the answer to happiness. Which is a joke, because what makes me happy might be different to what makes you happy. Yes? So one of the things I think that we've lived in this world for a long time around this whole carrot and stick thing. We're frightened that if we don't do something, there's a consequence. And then we often feel that we need to do something to get something, rather than just being happy for no reason at all. And the world that I see is that joy seems to be free. You can be joyful about anything. I can just be, I can be here. I, can anyone here be joyful? I, is that possible? Just joyful? I mean, it's just a word, right? But the, the word, does it not bring emotion? Could you not be happy for no reason at all? It really is a choice. But one of the things I've observed, and I am a personal development junkie, I've spent my life trying to find answers for things. My wife was diagnosed with a brain tumor and given uh, 18 months to live six years ago. Now, my parents brought me up pretty well. I'm very lucky. Anyone here have parents? Did your parents tell you anything that was useful? Yes. I mean, they said some things that weren't useful, like there are starving children in the world, eat what's in your plate. Now, how many of you went, well, how does that help them? But you still did as you were told. Like, how many of you, when someone sneezes, you go, bless you? Why do we do that? Well, it's because of the Black Death in the 13th century. Why do Spanish people talk like this? And I just speak. Why do they do this? Why do they do this? You know why? Because one of the kings in the 13th century in Spain, everyone was told to speak like him. And they just followed. How many things did your parents tell you that were useful? Anyone? Something that your parents told you, and you live and breathe by those words today. They've stayed with you, yes? Like what? Is there something in particular that they said to you? Give me one thing that they said. One thing. It could be many, many, but just one. Sorry? So one, one thing they told you that you actually say it to other people. Okay, treat others as you want to be treated. Anyone hear that? Yes? Anyone hear that? Anyone else? Don't what? Don't let it put you about. Who heard this? These were three of the worst things that we were told. These were three of the worst things we were ever told. Listen to this. Don't talk to strangers. Money doesn't grow on trees. And don't copy. They're the three of the worst things I believe the majority of us were ever taught. Because even today, some people have an issue talking to people. Some people believe money doesn't grow on trees, and then they wonder, oh, they haven't, it doesn't necessarily grow on trees unless you're in the olive business or something where something grows off trees. And copy. We should all copy. We should copy people that have already achieved what it is that we want to achieve. We, we, does this make sense? So my parents told me this. It's not what you know, it's who you know. 
And my mum has always said this. She, she didn't say it, but she showed me there is an answer to everything. So when my wife, if you came to work with me professionally, I believe I can help you. Whatever the problem, if I can't find the answer, I believe that, oh, well, I'll find someone else. I have evidence of people that I've helped. So I remember I said before about the hero's journey, when this happened to my wife, what did I do? I phoned my coach. I said, look, this is what's happened. And he said, find people that are still alive and find out what they did. That's great advice, don't you think? I would not have thought of that. I was panicking, I was worried, I was frightened. But he also said this, what's she going to do when she gets better? I went, Rafa, she's been told she's got 18 months to live. And he went, so what? I said, excuse me? He goes, have you ever defied the odds? Has anyone here ever defied the odds? I don't know. He went and bet on a real outsider, 100 to 1, and the bookmakers in it won. I don't, has anyone ever done that before? Yep, someone has. Anyone else defied the odds in some way? Yep. Some people maybe shouldn't be here. By the way, you've all defied the odds. Because once upon a time, there was a swimming race. You were in it. You won. If you were going to try and bet on which sperm was the one that was actually going to come out, you'd say, there's no point. I'd rather do the lottery. But the lottery, you know, the guy that prays to God and says, can I win the lottery? And God says, yep. So numbers come up. None of the numbers are his. She says, God, you said I was going to win the lottery. And God said, yeah, okay, well, meet me halfway. Buy a ticket. So if you think coming here today is the lottery, no. No, 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 no. That's the ticket. No, is it? No, I think going away is the ticket and what you're going to do with it. So I don't want to talk to you about happiness because you've already heard someone speak about it. You can hear her speak about it in more detail. I want to speak to you about inspiration because when you look at the, motiv you look at the science around inspiration, motivation, this was my bus. It was amazing. Uh, we, traveled around the, we traveled around the country. This was for a, a TV program. And it was just great to have the opportunity to, to help people change their life because I believe everyone needs help. Now, remember I spoke before about the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. The second principle in that book is the Mastermind Alliance. That's the second principle. I didn't get that. You know why I didn't get it? Because I didn't have one. I was doing everything on my own. And I was just speaking to a few of the, the speakers here and said, don't you feel that now there's something happening in the world where a lot of us are all kind of coming together and realizing, hang on, I can't do this on my, all on my own. I, I actually need you. I need you because these people, they might not listen to me, but they might have listened to me, but then they hear it from you and then they get a different perspective on it. And then when we come together, you and I come together with a shared goal, vision, purpose, whatever it is, you and I could achieve more working together, this is what Napoleon Hill said, in one year than I could probably do on my own in 10. So talk to strangers. Today in the breaks, find people that maybe have similar goals and dreams and ambitions to, as you and see who's going to help you. But you know what the issue with men is, right? We don't like asking for anything. We don't even like asking for directions. <laughs> we'll be looking at our phone and we'll like walk into a wall because that's where Google Maps says that we're going rather than, rather than actually stopping and saying, hey, can you help me, please? We only ever tend to ask for help when we're desperate. That's when we often get to see the best of you. But what I want you to understand today is it's easy. It's easy for us to be negative. It's so easy. You could say it's in our conditioning. You could say it's a part of our conditioning, that most of us will find it much easier to look at what's wrong and what's missing. It's, you know, the media shows that to us. But maybe even within our DNA, it's encoded for us to be that way because thousands of years ago, we had to be negative. We, we had to be on our guard just to survive. So to be positive, to think positive, that takes practice. It's like meditation, as you're going to hear in a little while. It takes practice. This whole mastery thing is, is kind of swept under the carpet. But when you look at great people and what they've achieved, you know, what Malcolm Gladwell talks about in his book, these 10,000 hours, it's not always 10,000 hours, by the way. Often it's the love and the happiness and the joy that you put into a practice that brings about results very quickly, but not in a two-hour film. Your life is not two hours. Your life is a series of days and moments 
And I challenge all of you today to start thinking about what are the things I could do every day. For me, happiness and joy is enjoying what I'm doing. It's not the result. I mean, I was born six weeks premature. I was in a hurry to come out, and I've been in a hurry ever since. You can tell, right? This guy, he's got a... So for me to stop and immerse myself in the moment, that's the only moment I have. I don't, I don't have this moment. But the, the challenge that we all have to face is the activation energy to get us from here to here. You see, there's a part of your brain called the amygdala that doesn't want you to change. It just wants you to stay as you are because that's who you are. It, it wants us to be what we have practiced being. So if I was to shake your hand, you feel compelled. You can't even stop yourself because that's what you know, right? You know to do this. You know, bless someone sneezes. You say bless you because you know, you know, you know. You do what you know. And some people do what they know until they know better. And then some people, when they know better, they do better. So this presentation is only short, but I want you to understand a little bit more about inspiration. Why we are not as inspired as we could be, what we need to do to become inspired, and what I believe is an incredibly powerful tool that's so simple that most people won't use it. We all agree, right? There are simple solutions to most of our everyday challenges, right? Yes, but remember this. The things that are easy to do are also very easy not to do. Meditating is really easy, but it's also easy not to do. Drinking water is an easy thing to do, but it's also an easy thing not to do. To talk yourself into something is easy. Talk yourself out of something is easy. D does this comprehend? Is this message coming through? I want to help you get started because the journey of a thousand miles, it begins with one step and then another step. And this is going to be your challenge when you leave here today. Has anyone here ever tried to chase a rabbit? Yeah? Has anyone here ever tried to chase two rabbits at the same time? You know, just imagine there's two rabbits. What would you do? You'd end up just going... Um, but even Rocky in Rocky 1, where he chases a chicken, he wasn't two. And he eventually he got the chicken. Because it's amazing what you can achieve when you put your mind to it, and when you understand how to create inspiration. Because inspiration isn't here. It's here. It's here it is. Even if it's meditating, you still have to do, you still have to sit and go into something to get yourself to start something. Does this make sense? Because what we all need to do, what we don't, it's up to you whether you do this or not. There's the law of diminishing intent. And this is really important. Does anyone know what I mean by the law of diminishing intent? You have the feeling that you want to do something, and you go, I'm going to do this. Yeah, just give me a second. And then the second turns into five, and then ten, and then you just can't be bothered. Has anyone ever experienced that before? You thought, I'm going to, I'm going to exercise. Yeah, that's a great, I, I'll just look at YouTube and another video about a cat, you know? <laughs> And then, oh, should I exercise? Oh, no, I'll do it tomorrow. So when you look at what the word inspiration means, I have a slight challenge with the meaning of the word. The process of be being mentally stimulated to do or feel something, especially to do something creative. And often that's when people are happy, is when they're creating something. They're involved in something. They get lost in something. They're just immersed in sometimes just the doing of something. But that's challenging because we have a world that is calling us away from ourselves, saying, you need to be over here. I know I'm contradicting myself because I'm saying your inspiration is here. But if you're not where you want to be, ask yourself this question. What do you feel you need to do to get yourself to take action for you to create the results that you want? Have you heard of the devil? Have you heard of the devil? You know where the word comes from, the devil? in its origin, meaning throwing obstacles out in your way? Have you ever done that before? Has anyone ever put obstacles in their own way? But just like the Chinese have always said in their ancient philosophies, a path with none of these doesn't go anywhere. So what happens when you hit an obstacle? What have you done in your life? How many of you have just given up? Yes? Have you ever done that? Don't worry, you're not the only one. 
We've all done it. And that's why we lack confidence. Because it's a part of your brain that remembers every single time you've said you're going to do something and you didn't do it. It remembers. So when you think, should I do this? Your brain will go, no, no, don't bother. Let's just stay here. That's the devil inside, you know? Outwitting the devil, which is another book written by Napoleon Hill. You know, learning to overcome the obstacles that you put in your own way. And one of the best ways to do that is to use your activation energy. Let me ask you, how did you get out of bed this morning? Shh. How did you get out of bed this morning? Who, when their alarm went off, they went, yes, let's go. It's the morning. Woo! That's unlikely. What got you out of bed this morning was uh, pain in many cases. Not all of you, but for a lot of people. In the world, what got them up, their alarm went off, and immediately they went, oh, just five more minutes. And I pressed snooze, went back to sleep. Who did that this morning, by the way? Just put your hand up. Okay, who pressed snooze twice? Good. Who did it three times? And who finally got them up because your bladder was like, I have got to go to the toilet, <laughs> right? You know, we can laugh at it, but that's what a lot of people do. And it's not to say that it's right, or it's not to say that it's wrong. It's just to say the easiest thing that any of us can do is just do what we've done before. Every time we do something we haven't done before, in the majority of cases, for the majority of people, a part of your brain goes, you ain't doing that. That is not what we know. If I said to some of you, up you come, pop yourself up on the stage, and tell us about your life, off you go. Now, I don't know if you would do this, but a lot of people would go, hang on, I'm not doing that. I want to protect what I know. I know how to worry. I know how to feel bad. I know how to feel jealous. I'm just going to repeat this. This is who I am. But if, how many of you feel you have potential that you just haven't actually tapped into just right yet? Okay, so most of you put your hands up. Some of you didn't. Okay, so that means you're the, you're the perfect human being and you, you've got everything you need, which is amazing. Teach us how to do that. But where your potential is, maybe your potential is over here, which means in order to get to your potential, you've got to stretch the edges of what is maybe comfortable to you. Remember what I said when I started talking this morning about where your potential exists and that in order to become a better version of yourself, you might need to get a little bit more uncomfortable to stretch yourself just a little bit. I'm not saying I'm right. What I'm saying is based on years of having worked with people and helped people make incredible changes in their life. Everyday people just like you and me and some crazy people who have become Olympic and world champions in certain disciplines, mainly because they've practiced things and they've got that little bit uncomfortable and pushed themselves to realize the potential that they have. So you deserve this, you know? Some people would say, well, if you're unhappy, maybe you deserve your unhappiness. I'm not saying that, but some people would. I just think you deserve to create the life you want. But if you want to create the life that you want, you're going to have to do something about it because it's not coming to you. It's something you have to do something about. And I know some of you are asking, okay, well, what do I have to do? Well, maybe that will become a little bit clearer to you today. How many of you know that maybe once upon a time you used to have more inspiration? Maybe when you were younger, you were just inspired about waking up in the morning. Who's got children here, by the way? Who's got young children? You ever seen their hair just standing up on end? I mean, I don't have this anymore, but, you know, where their hair just stands up like that in the morning? You know? Have you, do you remember that? I mean, I can even remember it as well, and kind of my mum kind of pushed it back down again. My coach said to me, the reason that happens is because your, their energy is just so pure. They're not negative. They're not thinking about tomorrow. They're not, they, don't, they don't care about what you think. They're just here. They're ready to, to play, to experience the lightness of their being. That's what we can share with everyone, <laughs> the lightness of our being. But when are we most light? Maybe when we're most present, which is a challenge to be present, isn't it? In a world that says, you're not good enough. You need to go and buy a pair of shoes. If you're a woman, obviously. I love going around to women's houses and just seeing how many pairs of shoes they've got. They can come to my house and see how many Apple products I've got. <laughs> that, like the Apple watch. I st I'm not wearing it because I, I just don't get on with it. But anyway, that's another story. To experience who you can possibly become, it's going to be about taking action. So what I want to explain to you is what you need to, to know in order to be that. You need to just 
allow yourself to get uncomfortable. Who has ever felt better for doing something they didn't want to do? Yes? Most of us have experienced, I didn't want to do it, and that's when you really need to often do these things, is when you really don't feel like meditating, when you really don't feel like exercising, when you really don't feel something, but you know that doing something would make you feel better. That's the days that often you really need to show yourself, to prove to yourself what it is that you can do. So what is this power tool that um, I, you know, I spoke about? Because we could all leave here with a change of attitude. My attitude is brilliant. I've got this really great attitude. And then something happens, right? Something happens, and an attitude can only take you so far. I believe there are powerful tools that we can all use that can really help us. One of those tools is definitely meditation. And when you hear from our, our next guest, who's dedicated, his, I would imagine, dedicated his life to, to, to meditating and sharing that with other people, that's one very powerful tool. But there's, there's, there's a few others. There's this. Even when you look at statues of Buddha, he's always wearing the half smile. Did you notice that? Because it's really hard to feel negative or feel anything that is worrying if you smile. But it's the simple things, right? Of course, when you smile at people, they you often think, well, especially if you come to London, come on the tube, all right? You think you're crazy. Remember, observe the masses. See, when you smile, you probably know this. You secrete hormones. You secrete serotonin. You secrete endorphins just by smiling. I mean, you might even want to go crazy and laugh, you know, for no reason at all. Have you seen babies ever laugh for no reason? You see, if the challenge that we, I see we, most of us have in our life is we can often act on our impulses or we can act on things that we're inspired to do. But wh whichever one you choose to do, the impulses to uh, eat more than you need to, the impulse to check Facebook for the millionth time, the impulse to do something that you know isn't going to take you to where that you want to go, but you know that by doing something that you have an impulse to do, you're going to get a hit of dopamine, you know, this drug that makes you feel good, that you've got five seconds, I believe, five seconds to not to do that. If you do it, you might regret doing it. And it's the same with something that you're inspired to do, to become more of a person of action. Why five seconds? So you might be inspired to drink a glass of water. You've got five seconds. Has anyone here ever been on a diving board? Five meters, oh, five seconds. And what happens? Hesitation comes in, yes? Then what happens? Self-doubt. And then you go, oh. Or maybe if you're, you know, you're a guy and you look at, remember you're seeing a young lady in a nightclub and she looks over at you and you look at her and you think, I'm going to go and talk to her. Oh. Oh. You've got five seconds. Because it's that part of your brain, the amygdala, that will try to protect who you are. But for you to tap into your potential, it, it's like a muscle. People don't go to the gym and say, here, where's my, where's my fitness? I've joined. You know, it's the same with anything. You know, I, he just said, what's happening? You know, it's, it's something you have to work at. And of course, if someone, if it's a big goal, then it needs to be broken down. And that's why coaches and, and a mastermind of helping you manage. Because if you want something, there's going to be obstacles. There's going to be times where people, just the result isn't the result you want. How many of you believe that when things happen the way that you don't want them to happen, you've got an opportunity to learn? Do you believe that? Well, why don't we all start to apply that? How many of you believe everything happens for a reason? Even if you don't believe it, just imagine you did. You think, well, this has happened. How can I use this? How can I learn from this? So we know it's easy to be negative. We've got to create activation energy, and we've got five seconds to do that, I believe. We can act on our impulses, or we can act on our inspiration. If you don't, then hesitation can set in, self-doubt can set in, and it's called the law of diminishing intent. That white hot desire that you had to do something, you don't do it, it spirals down from being something that was hot to something that was very cool to something that was very cold, and you wonder why you can't do it. The best thing to do is just get started. Just start meditating. Just get to the gym. Just do five seconds. I'm going to have a ceiling, a floor, and a ceiling of what you're going to do. You see, how many of you believe there is a gap has anyone here been to London before and you're here on the tube? Mind the gap. Mind, have you heard that? 
because you know, they don't want you to fall into the gap. There is a gap between most of us where we are now and where we want to be. Yes? For, for most people. If we don't do something about that gap, then what tends to happen for many people is doubt, worry, fear, anxiety sits in that gap. But if you do something and say, this is, this is who I want to become, and the most fascinating thing out of Think and Grow Rich, and I was talking to one of the experts before about the fact that very, he's gonna, he, he does a lot of work with this whole thing about placebos. You know, you could take something and you think it's going to work, and it works, and it, it's incredible, right? And we were talking about, is it because the person can see themselves in the future better? And Napoleon Hill, who wrote this book based on Andrew Carnegie, perhaps one of the greatest Scottish people that ever lived, said that very few people have a perception of where they're going, maybe 2% of people. They have a vision of, this is where I'm going. This is the life I'm going to create. Isn't that fascinating? See, motivation never works. It works for you to do the things that you enjoy. But to get yourself to do the things that you don't want to do, <laughs> try being motivated. <laughs> How long is that going to last? For my experience, 16 days is probably just about maximum to get yourself to do something you don't want to do. Inspiration is more about I'm inspired to do it because I can see if I do this where it's going. But can you see for most of us it's hard for us to, well, I've never had that before. This is all that I know. I don't see it, so how am I going to act on it? But this is where it takes a bit of practice. It takes a bit of mastery, but it can be done. It's a lot easier if you get help from people, if you take some advice, and you work with like-minded people. But let's, let's do something really, really powerful. So we all know that our potential is in what we have to move through. Yes? Does, does this, is this, go, is this seek, seeping in? Or is it actually the penny has dropped that you realize, okay, if this is who I want to become, what is it I have to move through to bring it on? What obstacles am I going to have to face? It's called, we talked about this on my daily broadcast all, all this week about if you were a package in the mail and the contents, they're you, what's the, what does the stamp say? Does it say fragile? Like handle me with care? Does it say robust, you know? Very, it will break, but it's strong. Or does it say anti-fragile? Like, bring it on. I can, I, can I can deal with this. What about you? I'm definitely robust. I do break. I broke this week when something happened that was outside of my... Because I'm not... Per Have you noticed I've got a big nose? I don't, has anyone noticed that yet? Has anyone thought it? Have you, no, no one's thought... Come on, put your hand up if you thought. He has got... There you go. How did she think that? She was talking to herself, which means that's the first sign of madness, isn't it? No, it's not. It's Suggs appearing on stage, the lead singer of Madness. We all talk to ourselves. We, we all do it. But if you can see the funny side of what you say to yourself, and if you can apply what I'm going to show you now, which is what I believe an incredibly powerful technique, but the technique only works if you use it. How many of you remember this TV program? Yes? Anyone remember this? Thunderbirds? You remember Thunderbirds? The puppets? Who remembers the beginning? How did it start? Five, four, three, two, one. Who remembers that? Doesn't matter if you didn't. If you want to radically change your life, if you are inspired to do something, do it. How do you do it? Let's go back. Maybe it will play again. So everyone right now, think about something that often you feel like doing, but you don't do it. And think about giving yourself five seconds to act. Because I guarantee you, if you do this, I put the alarm on the other side of the room, even though I seem to wake up before the alarm goes off most of the time, which is quite unusual. It's like I've got a, an alarm in my own head. But as soon as the alarm goes off, I'm straight out of bed. Five, four, three, two, one. I go and turn it off. If I'm going to communicate with someone, if I'm going to meditate, this is what I do to get myself ready. Five, four. I have to count down. I can't count up. Because if I count up, I can keep going. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Five, four, three, two, one. 
You see, to develop habits, to develop rituals, to develop um, momentum. Momentum is what we have to create. How many of you have ever created momentum to the point where doing the thing that you once was difficult is now easier to keep doing and giving it up is harder to do? Yes? This is what mastery is. And I ask you, think about what area of your life do you want to master? Or mas I don't believe you'll ever achieve mastery, but it's something you continuously work on. And think about using this. Everyone just play it, play it in your head. Once you get started, it's often easy to keep going. But just understand that uh, your brain is only ever trying to protect you. But once you get going, it's often easier just to... Does, does this... Is everyone getting this? Is everyone, who's, who is actually going to use this? Because if you don't use it, you'll never know. I worked with Tin Henman in 1998, and we showed him a technique about focusing from down here, what the, the Chinese call the Dantian, the uh, Japanese call it Hara focusing from down here as opposed to thinking too much in your head. He got to the semi-final of Wimbledon and then we spoke and he said, yeah, it was great, but it stopped working. I felt like saying, we didn't put batteries in it. <laughs> it stopped working because you stopped practicing it. The more you practice anything, the better you become. This is where mastery comes. If you want something, chances are it's probably going to take a little bit of time. It's not going to happen like this. But the decision, does anyone know what the word decision means? It comes from the French word to désir, to cut off. This is what I'm doing. This is who I'm becoming. Please will you support me? Many of you, if you do decide to do something different, you might want to tell people who aren't here today who you might want them to support you, of why you're cho choosing to change. This is called change your world. It's not change the world, even though you will, by just changing you. Does this, is this useful to you? You know, I'm sorry if it's a little bit too simplistic. He's just played me Thunderbirds. I mean, <laughs> you know. But by the way, men, men, is there any men in the room? Yeah, you know why relationships often don't work? Because men, we don't listen. You know, when a woman talks, we don't actually know what to do. We feel like running away, so, but we don't. We just try and fix what they're saying by interrupting them. <laughs> but often women make sense of the world just by talking about what they see here. It's a generalization. But to engage means five, four, three, two, one. I'm giving you my attention. I'm giving you it. Here it is. If you do this, men, and you do this to a woman, a woman will probably go, what are you doing? <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> when you go home tonight, if you share a bed with someone, Get in their side of the bed and see what happens. Imagine what your partner will say. So, what will they say? You've all got an imagination, right? What will they say? The, what, the, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? What happened? What have you done today? What do they tell you? Have they brainwashed you? They'll go, that's my side. Look, that's my side. Look, there it is. Look, can you not see all the stuff? Oh, that's all my stuff. This is who we are. This is who we've practiced being. I don't know about you, if I slept on the other side of the bed, which I've done a couple of times, I didn't sleep very well because the part of my brain is going, this is wrong. But my wife is one of these very strange people that can close her eyes and go to sleep. We can learn things. We can change. It's really up to you. I really appreciate being able to share what I believe to be. Um, but it's something you have to commit to doing. The, better you, the more you use this, and don't abuse it because once you start to abuse it, it'll just... It'll just wear off. Um, most of you know that I stream every single day. At seven, stream. Isn't that a funny term? I stream every day. Who invented that? Uh, every day at 7 a.m., Monday to Friday, and I've been doing this for about, I don't know, 20 months. And it's a joy to me because what makes me happy is growing, learning. We all want to learn. It's just most of us use the learning muscle by watching Jeremy Kyle. Obviously, none of you would do that. Or the news, or the, the EastEnders, a story that never ends. You know, but we, it just captures a part of our brain. Five, four, three, two, one, to get yourself started, to get yourself going, to get yourself into some deep work. 
Because often the hardest thing is just getting started. And when you start something that's important, have a go at blocking off all other distractions if you can. Turn the phone off. Do some deep work. Because that often makes you feel happy to start something and then finish it. That's often where confidence is. It's in the completion. It's the showing of yourself of what you can do. If any of you want to get uh, that, my confidence book, which I wrote with my wonderful friend, Kate, who's over there, who I admire so much for retiring. <laughs> Deciding that she wants... Why have I picked this up for? <laughs> See? It's my brain taking me to where I've been before. But I want to be like Captain Kirk on Star Trek. I want to boldly go where no man has, ha has gone before. You really are in, in for such a treat because, you know, what Susie has done here is, is really remarkable, bringing some great people here for us all to learn from.